Well, first of all, I'm Sarah de Jong. I'm the deputy director of the International New Safety Institute. Um, and one of the things we do is to organize and make available safety training for journalists in country. So that means Afghan journalists, Iraqi journalists, Palestinian journalists, anywhere where there's basically a hot zone or conflict or uprising going on or any form of civil disorder and even recently natural disasters. And we've been doing this for the past five years. Um, we are also having in our membership quite a lot of international national news organizations and we've come to realize through our experience that it is one thing to provide this type of training uh, for local journalists, for the journalists that actually go out and cover these types of dangerous stories, but it's quite another for the editors or those that stay behind in a newsroom. They seem to lack uh, the knowledge or the experience or the awareness what their, what their journalists actually face in the field and therefore seem to be unable to prepare them properly, to provide them with the proper assistance, uh, with the proper follow-up. Uh, there, there seem to be no safety policy at all uh, within any management of most media. It's really a handful ex of exceptions with the international broadcasters that seem to follow quite rigidly a very strict safety policy which you also can tell in the different stories that they report that very often their journalists are much more you know, aware there's much more of a, of a system in place. Uh, also, for example, in kidnappings of the journalists that do work for international news organizations, there seems to be much more of an awareness of how to act, what to do, how to get their journalists to be freed. Now, we are working currently on uh, something to provide more newsroom awareness, if you will, which is something that will prepare editors, producers, newsroom managers better to make them more aware of what their journalists are facing, but also how to deal with any what-if situation. What will they do if they get that phone call that one of their journalists in the field has just been shot down? What will they do? Are there any medical facilities nearby? How are they going to evacuate the person? What if the person is actually the journalist is killed? How will they repatriate the body uh, or retrieve the body if it's in, an, in a local situation? What to do if your journalist gets taken hostage? Are there any protocols in place, any kind of guidelines that they can follow? I mean, which one in the management is going to take responsibility of communicating to a foreign government and their own government? Or to communicate to the colleagues or to communicate with the family members? A lot of, most newsrooms, or editors I should say, seem to be blissfully unaware of this. Now a lot of this does come down to common sense, and a lot of it also comes down to a certain sense of machoism, if you will, in the profession itself, as in we don't need this. However, times have clearly changed drastically, especially within the last 10, 15 years, and it's time that newsroom editors catch up with the times. What about helping local journalists in particularly in conflict situations where, and it has to be said, it's, we, it's mainly Western media organisations are sending local stringers out into the field because simply it's too dangerous for their correspondents to be there. What is organisations such as NC doing to, to help those local journalists um, deal with the sort of situations that they encounter? Well, I mean, we have so far provided uh, training to about 860 journalists in 16 of the worst countries in the world. So that's, of course, step one. Step two is to make sure that relevant security information becomes available in various languages to these journalists so that they can prepare much better uh, before they go out to cover any type of situation. I mean, how many journalists are aware in any kind of bombing situation that there's a huge risk of a secondary bomb in place actually just uh, to target them and the first uh, responders that will respond to a bombing situation? Almost nobody knows. Uh, we do provide this kind of information. We provide safety advice in different languages. We have five offices around the world. Um, these are things, ironically, that are being uh, quite quickly developed and it's now almost a situation where most local journalists are getting more access to relevant security and safety advice and information than an international journalist has because most international journalists will just hop on a plane and get to a story, cover it, hop on a plane and get back. Now, what is also extraordinarily important is that local journalists, of course, do not hop in and out of planes. They stay there. Their families are there. The stories that they cover, whether it is for national media or for international media, may have a lasting impact on their own security.